panned out through the city by the truckload. Many were teenagers, armed only with wooden clubs. On Sunday, word spread that President Reed's government had fallen, and rebels started to gather at the National Palace. Inside, Jose Rafael Molina Ureña, at that time acting president, went on television to proclaim the imminent return of Juan Bosch, who had been ousted from the presidency by Reed in September 1963. U.S. airborne troops were flown in from Fort Bragg, seizing two bridges linking the airbase with the capital. On the ground, P-51 fighter planes of the Dominican Air Force, which had been used to strafe rebel positions in the city, were fueled and armed for fresh sorties. The city is reported on the verge of anarchy wounded. The leaders of the military junta, nominally the government of the republic, one officer from each of the three services, directs the fighting against the rebels from the base. They estimate that as many as ten people have been killed. In the last 24 hours, violence and disorder have increased. There is great danger to the life of foreign nationals and of thousands of Dominican citizens our fellow citizens of this hemisphere. By an outstanding effort of mediation, the Papal Nuncio has achieved an agreement on a ceasefire, which I have urged all those concerned to take. But this agreement is not now, as I speak, being fully respected. The eyes of the hemisphere are now on the OAS. OAS both in its meeting today and on the meeting of its foreign ministers contemplated tomorrow. The wisdom, the statesmanship, and the ability to act decisively of the OAS are critical to the hopes of peoples in every land of this continent. The United States will give its full support to the work of the OAS and will never depart from its commitment to the preservation of the right of all of the free people of this hemisphere to choose their own course without falling prey to international conspiracy from any quarter.